Hi everyone, it's Laura Volpes and today I'm back to share with you a slimline scene card that I created for the What Inspires You card hop. For the background of my scene, I started by using the large slimline dies by Lon Fon to die cut some watercolor cardstock by Spectrum Noir and I'm going to create a night sky using my Distress Oxides. I started with peacock feathers and then I moved on to wilted violet and I'm using some foam ink blenders to do my blending. Whenever two colors meet, I'm making sure to go back and forth with my foam ink blenders in those areas in order to get a nice and smooth transition. And then the last color that I have at the top of my sky is blueprint sketch. I wanted to tone this down towards a more purple color, so I'm going to go over that entire area with my wilted violet. To darken up the top part of the sky, I also came in with a little bit of Distress Oxide in the color black suit, which I'm blending on the very edges of the top of the panel. And again, to tone this towards a more blue purplish shade, I went over that area again with Blueprint Sketch. To add a fun touch to this background, I also decided to spray it with a little bit of clean water that I'm then blotting off with a clean towel. The bottom part of my sky was left blank because there is where I will have my puffy clouds for which I used again the slimline dies by Lon Fon as well as the puffy cloud borders also by Lon Fon. I am working again with Distress Oxides on some watercolor cardstock by Spectrum Noir, which I love because it's great for ink blending and it is bright white, so it matches nicely my Nina Solar White cardstock that I always use when I do my alcohol marker coloring. This time around though, I am using a brush to blend my Pink Raspberry Distress Oxide because I want a soft blend into white. While my Distress Oxide is still wet, I'm going to brush some Perfect Pearls in the color Perfect Pearl on each and every one of these puffy cloud borders to add a pearlescent touch to that. And then, in order to add even more fun to this sky background, I decided to use the new Starry Sky Stencil also by Lon Fon. When I use stencils, I love to work on my Make Art Station and I normally work on the 7x7 7 7 inches, but for this limline format, the larger size was just perfect. So I can use it to secure my card and my stencil in place using the magnets that come with the platform. And at this stage, what I'm doing is I'm adding a base layer with FSJ Whipped Cream Ink. This is a white pigment ink which has great coverage for ink blending and for stamping. And this is going to be the base over which I'm going to apply my Stickos Glitter Gel in the color Moon Dust. The reason why I went over the areas with white pigment ink first was to have basically just a white layer because this gel is clear so I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. I am first applying it with a spatula by Tonic Studios and then once I have covered the entire area with my glitter gel, I'm going to take this scraper by scrapbook.com so that I can remove the excess and check out how much product I am able to save. It's really a lot. And this also gives me a very smooth and homogeneous application of my gel in this case, but this will work also with texture pastes. Here is a look at this really pretty night sky. I have to say I love the color combination and all the sparkle. For my images today, I used a lot of different stamp sets by Lon Fon. These are some newer as well as some older stamp sets. And the great thing about Lon Fon stamps is that you can combine them so easily together to create your scenes. I'm stamping my images with scrapbook.com premium hybrid black ink on some Nina Solar White 110 pounds cardstock because I will be doing some coloring with illustrator markers. In case you're not familiar with them, these are alcohol based markers and are my absolute favorite coloring medium. I go back to them over and over again and they are without a doubt the most featured coloring medium here on my channel. 
I am quickly cleaning my stamps with a chamois which is just wet with some clean water and then I can position them back in my misty because I want to stamp some of the images a couple of times. My absolute favorite type of cards are these kind of busy scene cards with lots of images and details and so I prefer to maybe stamp more than I need at the beginning rather than having to go back again and stamp once all the card is almost put together. Anyway, in this case I don't think there were many images left, maybe a couple of clouds, but pretty much all the rest was used on the card. As for the coloring, as I said, I'm using alcohol markers today. These are Illustrator markers by Spectrum Noir and I will have all the list of the markers that I used on screen as well as on my blog. I'm not going to show you the entire coloring process because I don't want the video to be too long, but I'm going to show you each color combination at least once so that you can see how basically I blend these colors together. For the clouds I used BP1 and PP1 and then I blended them out towards the white with my colorless blender, but you can see that most of the area is left white. For the glazing of the donut, I'm using colors in the same color family, so I'm sticking to the BP markers, but I'm going a little bit darker. My darkest marker will be BP4 and then for my mid-tones I'm going to have BP2 and for my highlights I have BP1. I'm adding the shading at the edges of the glazing and keeping the center lighter. And then for the actual dough of the donut itself, I used TN1 and TN5 just around the glazing basically to create kind of a drop shadow there. Coming in with one more layer of TN1 to blend everything out and then I decided to bring in this kind of mint blue color combination and for that I am using JG5, GT3 and GT1. For the bodies of the unicorns I'm going to do some very quick shading using BT3, BT1 and a colorless blender. Also in this case, like for the clouds, I wanted the unicorns to look white, so I'm only adding a little bit of color to the shadow areas and leaving most of the rest of the image blank. The colorless blender helps me get that nice fade into white, so I always use that whenever I'm coloring and shading a white image. For the hair of the unicorns, I'm using PV4, PV2 and PV1 and adding some brush strokes to create texture that makes the hair look a little bit more realistic and interesting. And again using GT3 and GT1 for the horns of the unicorns. The last image that I'll be showing today is the moon and for that I used CT4, LY3 and LY1 but then I felt that there wasn't a lot of contrast going on so I decided to come in with GY4 and add just a little bit more shading there at the left side of the moon. I cut out all the images and then I started assembling my scene and I just started adding these puffy cloud borders at the bottom of my sky, slightly overlapping them with each other to create more dimension and interest. I'm only adding the glue at the bottom of the borders so that the top parts are free and I have more room to tuck in my images. While I was playing with my scene, I figured out that I wanted another puffy cloud border at the top of the sky, so I went ahead and quickly created that off camera, and then I started working on the sentiment before actually gluing down all the images. The banner that I used is part of the Flipping Awesome die set by Lon Fon, and I'm using one of the greetings in the Unicorn Picnic stamp set. I bent my stamps a little bit so that they would follow the line of the banner and then I'm stamping the greeting with that same whipped cream ink by FSJ that I was talking to you about earlier and you can see what a wonderful impression I got with this ink, I was really impressed with the performance, it was great for ink blending and it's also really great for stamping. At this point everything was ready and I could go ahead and adhere all my images which I am gluing down using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive and some reverse tweezers. This make it really easy to deal with die cuts, especially the very tiny ones and I was having so much fun creating this scene with all the cute critters and all the details with the food flying around the clouds. Obviously I had to add a little bit of sparkle, starting with a brush pen, a glitter brush pen by scrapbook.com that I used to coat some parts of the images. 
I'm also using Crystal Stickles by Ranger on the mane of the unicorns as well as on the moon and then some glossy accents on the glazing of the donuts, on the ice creams as well as on the strawberries. By the way, the theme of this card I haven't mentioned yet but was inspired by the current Lone Phone Addicts challenge which is fun with food and here is the final result. I absolutely love this card and I had so much fun creating it and you cannot go wrong with Lone Phone. And that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Also make sure to check out Create and Inspire to see what that is all about and if you're new here don't forget to subscribe for more card making inspiration from me. As always thank you all so much for stopping by, stay safe and healthy and have a great day.